Hey there, Fosco here from Parse. Today we're going to go over a full development environment setup for those of you running OS X. Let's get started. Modern development environments are getting pretty complicated. No matter what you're doing, you're going to have a bunch of different things that you need to set up and install before you can start building. If you're using iOS, you're going to be setting up Xcode and package managers like CocoaPods. If you're doing Android development, you're going to have Android Studio. So for Parse Server, we're going to set up the following type of things on your Mac. We're going to set up the Homebrew Package Manager, and we're going to use that to install things like Node.js and Git, the Source Control Manager. We're going to set you up with a GitHub account, and we're going to uh, configure the SSH keys on your machine and provide those to GitHub as well. Uh, then lastly, we're going to set up an IDE or a text editor. Uh, we're going to use Visual Studio Code for this example. And then you'll be ready to start building apps with Parse Server. All right, so we've got a brand new Mac here. The only thing I've done is install some screen recording software and open a few tabs in Safari. So our goal here today is to get set up with all the prerequisites to be able to build and run things on Parse Server. The first thing that we're going to do is install Homebrew. They call it the missing package manager for OS X. They have install instructions here. Basically, you copy this line off of the website. Make sure you get all of it. You copy that. And then you're going to open a terminal and paste it. So I like to use Spotlight, like Command Space, and I start typing terminal. And then at the terminal, you're going to paste that in and run it. So this is saying that uh, this command requires the command line developer tools. So let's say we're going to install those now. You could also get Xcode and that will install a lot of that for you. But for right now, let's just click install on the developer tools and agree to the terms of service. So once that's done, you can hit done. Back here in the terminal, it wants us to press return to continue. All right, so to continue, you need to type in your user account password so that it can do a few things that it can't do normally as a user. And then it continues. So now that Homebrew is done installing, uh, you can use it to install other applications. Um, like the example on the website is to install the wget package. You type brew install wget. We're going to install a few things. Uh, mostly Node.js. So let's type brew install node. It's going to download the current latest version of node, which is 5.9 as of this recording. But whatever is the latest, whenever you get to this video, it should be fine. Now that we have Node installed, we're also going to install Git, the source control manager. Great. We've got Node and Git installed. One thing you definitely want if you're involved with software development these days is to have a GitHub account. So let's go over to github.com. And if you don't have one already, you should really sign up for GitHub. Enter a username, enter your email address, create a password, go through their validation process, set up two-factor, all of that good stuff. Once you have an account, we can continue. And I'll sign into mine now. So what we're looking at here is the parse server repository on GitHub. That's at github.com slash parse platform slash parse dash server. Make sure to star the repository to let us know that you're using this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to your settings. So up here in the top right, I'm picking my icon and going down to settings. What we need to set up are your SSH keys. So you pick SSH keys on the left, and they're listed here. And they have a nice link here for generating SSH keys. So let's open that up. And it's a pretty simple process. You do want to check and see if you have any existing ones, and they have a guide for that. And what we're going to do is go back to the terminal. 
and I will check to see, do I have an SSH key? And those are stored in a folder off of your home folder uh, called .ssh. And if you have one, this command would work where you catch um, id underscore rsa dot pub. I don't have such a thing. You can also just see that if you try and use a tab completion to see do I have an SSH folder, and I do not. It will not complete it. So then we're going to follow the guide to generate a new SSH key. Uh, so in the terminal, we're going to copy this line here, SSH key gen, and we're going to include your actual email. So I'm going to paste in part of this command and then finish it with my email address. And it will start to generate a set of RSA key pairs. You can enter through all of these prompts. You don't need a passphrase on it. And when it's done, it prints out a little random art image. Uh, but what we need to do is access this pub file. Uh, so again, we're going to type cat tilde slash dot ssh slash id underscore rsa dot pub. And we're going to copy this entire output. We'll copy that. You go back to GitHub, and we can go back to the SSH key page and click New SSH Key. And you give it a title, it's like your new laptop. And then you paste in the key that we copied from the terminal. And then we're all set up. This is a good thing to have set up, especially when you get into more advanced uses of GitHub and you have private repositories. OK, so the last thing we want to set up in this environment setup video is Visual Studio Code. Uh, this is at code.visualstudio.com. There are many text editors and IDEs that you could use. Uh, personally, I wind up using WebStorm a lot. Um, I really like that. Um, but as a good example, Visual Studio Code is, is very popular now. Um, so you go to code.visualstudio.com, and we can click the Download for OS X button, which will start that download. Now that it's done, we can access it through the Downloads bar down here, Visual Studio Code. We'll say, yes, we do want to open it. So it opened, and it also opened a web page, but we're going to close that. So now you've got a code editor and all the other dependencies necessary to get started building for Parse Server. In our next video, we'll cover running your first Parse app.